Good evening. My name is Sandy Alexander. I'm a member of your senior common room, and I'm here to introduce the first of two students who will be speaking tonight. She is Peggy Walenda Mativo, and the title of her speech is Out of Africa, A True Story. Is that the first time you've taken a flight out of Africa? The blonde from Kentucky asked the brown-haired young man beside her. Yes, it actually is. I've never flown from Africa before. Like many tourists before them, they went on to discuss the dangers of Kenyan matatus, public service minivans, the craziness of Nairobi's impossible traffic, and how everything they had experienced from diarrhea to our airports was incredibly bad. This young lady, however, still managed to praise the fact that while in the national park, their tour guide had a Bush A certificate, which made the experience feel safer for her. From their story, it sounded like Africa was this bit of hell that they were lucky to have escaped from. As I stood listening, a familiar anger rose up in me. I was enraged to hear how the beautiful place I had grown up in was reduced to this hapless contortion of reality. I wanted to challenge them and show them how incorrect they were, but I was afraid. In the lobby of the immigration hall at Boston Logan, I was afraid that if I spoke up, I would somehow anger the powers that be and get locked out of America. But what gave them the right to say that they had just flown out of Africa? After all, Africa is 54 countries, not just one. And in the two months there, they're just saying two or three countries. Africa is about a billion people on one big continent. So how much does one poster, one book, one campaign, one trip teach anyone all there is to know about us? Now, this story is not a one-time occurrence, but something I live through every single day. This mythical land of Africa, this is both an abyss of affliction for its people and still a utopic paradise. It is a place where donors and goodwill ambassadors can go to serve their time in purgatory and come out with a tale of how they saved wretched, ignorant tribesmen from the horrors of the black continent. In a perfect world where we all make objective decisions based on opinions that are neither mal-informed nor misinformed, such stories could be dismissed as trivial or harmless. However, these stories are potent because of how they shape the thoughts of those who hear them. For instance, in my freshman year, one of my professors assigned a reading that made a demeaning remark about the intelligence of the backward village African. I was humiliated, yet no one else noticed. Then I remained silent because I was the only African in this class and I feared that no one would agree with my point of view. I must admit that the pressure I felt to conform to this mythical idea of what Africa really was came not just from without but also from within. Under the cloak of this Africa, I could stand out as the true oxymoron pitted for the hardships I must have endured for being from the continent, while at the same time admired and celebrated for overcoming them. For instance, within the first five minutes of our introduction to each other, a friend of mine once said, you're from Africa, that's so cool. Then I reveled in the mix of pity and pride that he presented. 
Later, the same friend asked me, "You're from Kenya. Do you speak Kenyan?" This level of ignorance left me speechless. I had to pinch myself to make sure I was not in a dream. I wanted to scream, "You're from America. Do you speak American?" Yet something held me back. I realized that just like I, he had believed the lie that was told in thousands of posters, thousands of images with shabby-looking African children. Don't misunderstand me. I'm not denying the existence of very grave problems on the continent. I'm just saying that these stories are not the full picture. Africa has a vast abundance of history, culture, initiative, and knowledge that is often eclipsed in the shadow of this one-sided story of poor Africa. The wealth and views of experience of the African life that we have gathered so far. Are not the weapons that we should use to continue to defend this lie, but the tools that we can use to see past it. The prostituted, mythical Africa is a story that is told to grace the ears of the listener and glorify the storyteller, but it is an injustice to every single one of us, one that we should not perpetuate. By continuing to tell an imbalanced tale, once we found the truth, Salman Rushdie, the British Indian novelist, once wrote, "Those who do not have the power over the story that dominates their lives, the power to retell it, rethink it, deconstruct it, joke about it, and change it as times change, these people are truly powerless." Because they cannot think new thoughts, so I urge you: tell a true story, even though it paints you less like a god reaching down to save the mortals in your story. Tell a true story, because it paints these people as the human beings. That they actually are people with mothers, fathers, little boys, and little girls. People just like you, who would shudder to hear the type of tales that are told about them. Tell the true story, measuring both the good and the bad. Tell the true story, simply because it is the truth, and you know it. Thank you.